Oh boy, 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 boy. Let me make sure my mic setting is uh, on the right thing. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh man. Ooh, I'm trying to recover from last night. Last night. Ooh, last night. Oatmeal on deck. Oatmeal on deck. This shit, this look like slot. Let me put my bananas in there. This look like slot. Bananas go in. I know, I know. It's talking about yuck. <laughs> I don't got nothing else to eat in the morning time. Oatmeal, look like slop with some raisins and bananas. Oh, man. Old man vitamins and some water. Mm -mm -mm. Salute to the early risers. I love getting up early. Especially when you take advantage of getting up early. Some days I don't. <laughs> A lot of days I don't. But when I do, that's the advantage that I have over most people. You can get more done by the time they wake up. You can, you can get a whole lot of things accomplished. Whether it be from a fitness standpoint or work standpoint, you can literally be taking a nap while other people are up and at them because you had already been up. Mm-hmm. Man, this oatmeal is disgusting. <laughs> I'm getting tired of this oatmeal. I ain't gonna lie. I can't wait that these 30 days of this vegan thing up so I can add some some fish to it. I think I'll feel much better if I can add a little little fish here and there. Not every day, just to break it up. Yeah, just to break it up. Candy man, salute to you. I'm still angry vegan in it out, you know. Add some brown sugar. It, yeah, it got brown sugar in it. I still don't like it. I didn't eat it too many days. I'm ready. And, and I just went to the store and got some more boxes of it. That's how much I hate it, but I don't got nothing else to eat. I'm going to turn into an oatmeal. I'm going to turn into some oats. And I'm going to turn into a chickpea. <laughs> But, man, them basketball games was off the chain last night, boy. Vegan is boring. <laughs> yeah. It might be boring, but I feel good, though. I ain't going to front. Now, as long as I eat enough. Shit, I caught a hunger headache so bad yesterday. I ain't want to hear from nobody. I was trying to hurry up and get to some food. The salad was cool, but the other stuff, I, I didn't want the mystery meat. So I ended up getting salad and soup. And uh, bread. Salad, soup, and bread. That's what I had yesterday, man. I said, man, give me another one of them salads. Add some extra avocado or something. Now I was hungry. I don't know what they were looking at me like, man, this nigga eating this salad this fast. <laughs> I was eating that salad like a dog, boy. I was in there. <laughs> I was over top of that salad, boy. I ain't going to lie. I had to cover up my mouth. Hey, y'all, something funny happened to me in the elevator, too. Hey, listen. I had got some new swagger. Some new got dang old Mike Tyson the other day. Boy, and this shit here for about 15 minutes. I don't want to talk to nobody. I can't. I'm just thinking of the most simplistic way to respond to you. 
so I don't have to respond no more. So <laughs> I bump into some uh, some ladies and they see me with my uh, my smoothie uh, cup in my hand. They was like, "Oh, what's in it?" And I was like, "Vegan smoothie." <laughs> And look, when they walked off, they were looking like, this weird motherfucker. We could see that that's a smoothie, you big, tall, weird dummy. Hey, but look, after they walked off, I'm like, oh, shit. I had to think about it like, dang. They wanted to know the ingredients of the smoothie, like, you know, cinnamon, uh, you know, avocado, ginger. They wanted to know things like that, what I had in the smoothie, kiwi, but shit. Ladies, I'm sorry. If I bump into y'all again, if y'all just tell your friends, that big dumb motherfucker, because I was high. I didn't feel like talking. I had just finished it. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, ladies, I'm not my normal self when I first, about the first 15 minutes, okay? I don't feel like answering questions like that in depth. <laughs> At Kwame, you big dummy. <laughs> yeah, I said, hey, I responded, vegan smoothie. And it was perfect timing. The elevator opened. It was an awkward silence. They was looking at me like, you big, tall dummy. We can see it's a smoothie. I wanted to yell back, it was, it's uh, strawberries in it. <laughs> I wanted to yell to him, it's, stra it's strawberries in it, y'all. <sighs> These are the breaks. This is your brain on that Mary Jane. Yeah, it has its delayed effects. It does. But it has its common effects, too. I was able to laugh at it. I'm pretty sure, you know, if they ever hear this, they'll laugh at it, too. Like, yeah, I knew something was wrong with this big, tall dummy. <laughs> You're towering tall in the thumbnail. Oh, that's because the thumbnail lady sleep. She didn't give me no new thumbnail, so I just used that one. That's like a default thumbnail. And I got to get a seat today because I wasn't ready for that swagger. And then yesterday, I went and got a hookah, you know, so I can watch the games. I'm in there drinking water. They got nasty water. I can't really drink. But I'm in there drinking water. And I ordered a hookah. Man, listen. For those of you, uh, I don't know how y'all just do hookah. Maybe, I th maybe I'm thinking I'm a little tipsy when I have a drink in a hookah. But boy, I got a super headache, like a super buzz when I hit that hookah. Yeah, that's when I was just graduated. That's, that, yeah, that's... That's young high after high school, Quan. But yeah, that got dang on hookah. Man, I was like, what in the hell is going on? I stood up one time a little too fast. Damn near fell. I was like, oh, man. What's nasty water? You know, they, they only had that... Uh, I think they were selling like Zephyr's Hill or some mountain water, or some some regular filtered water. But that's all they had. But man, listen here, boy. That who I said, man, did this nigga just drug my water or something? A like hookah? Man, I went to. I said, damn. I said, hold up. I said, let me get another water. <laughs> I sat my head down. I said, boy, this hookah buzz is something serious. I don't know what the hell happened. I, man, I was dizzy for a couple of seconds. I set that goddamn hookah down. It's like, you all right? Nah, I don't want no more of this goddamn hookah. Mm -mm. I don't want no more of this hookah. I'm scraped. <laughs> hookah like hitting a backwood. Damn. Not hookah water? No, man. Give me some, give me another water. Hey, look, everybody in there was like, damn, this nigga ain't drinking. You could tell you drank too much. Motherfucker be looking at you like you on antibiotics or something. 
oh, this nigga ain't drinking this week, y'all. Look at this nigga. This nigga must be done caught something. That's when you in the hood, for sure. They think your ass, the only time, you know, they think, as soon as you ain't drinking, a person that's known for going to the bars and chilling and having a good time, they be swaying up and down. You on that penicillin. <laughs> they be swaying up and down at that nigga burning, y'all. He on that penicillin. Hold on, let me take my vitamin. Yeah, see, I, what I did was this morning, I ate oat, the other morning I ate oatmeal, then I ate a salad, and then I had some uh, toast with peanut butter, bananas, and uh, honey, and cinnamon on it. So I had two pieces of toast like that. And then I got on live after my after my little workout. I got on live, and then um, I took a I took another cup of smoothie with me, and then I didn't eat again till like six thirty. And I think by that time I had a headache like a motherfucker. That means you always there. Yeah, I'm, that's that's usually my spot for football season and all that. They used to see me down there every game. I'm in there drinking them lights. But then they see me in there just drinking water. They like, man, this, this is about the second time I done seen you coming here just drinking water. What the hell wrong with you? <laughs> I know the bartender. He real, I know all the bartenders. They real cool. Oh, man. What you talking about? The thumbnail lady. I'm looking how the hell I'm looking at a text from the thumbnail lady and the thumbnail lady jump in the chat. Thumbnail lady, you everywhere. Oh, she done sent me a thumbnail. Thank you, thumbnail lady. I really appreciate that. Okay, salute to you. Oh yeah, I got. Hold on. Hey, uh, Biz, I got, I got that uh, Ethereum. I got that. I got XRP, and I think I got that crypto, the CRO. I think I got that. I got to check, but I definitely got those uh, two, and then I got Bitcoin. Hey, Biz, I'm thinking about coming up with a crazy plan and sell one of my properties and buy it all in Bitcoin. Put all the cash in Bitcoin. The way that shit growing. <laughs> Put it all in Bitcoin and then borrow from my Bitcoin. Cha-ching, cash. Yeah, that Bitcoin is off the chain. Some Shiba S H I B L. Let me see what I well, I ain't gonna say everything I got. I only got a dollar per stock. Amazon went down yesterday, but I think they back up. Let me see. Nope, Amazon is down, down, down. Damn, what's going on with Amazon? I need to buy some more of this shit. While it's down. We know Amazon ain't going nowhere. I don't see biz. That's because I was texting her. <laughs> Buy them red bottoms. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, 
They better bring my package today. I know that. Amazon ain't bringing you no package. They down. Yeah, they ain't got nothing. They ain't got nothing. They can't bring you nothing right now. How much is Amazon? Huh? Look at that, like one seventy-seven. One seventy-seven, one hundred and seventy-seven dollars and seventy-five cents. Wait a minute. It's down forty seven cent. Yep, average cost is a dollar twenty two. Stocks when they're low buy. <laughs> hey, Doug, say Amazon sick of bringing toenail clippers and eight polishes for that one toe. <laughs> hey, he on the thumbnail in the head. Hey, Biz, he reading out text to the chat. Shut up, thumbnail. Look at that. The thumbnail lady ain't nothing but an average everyday snitch. Hey, look here. B is already say what I said, what he said to me on live video. Thumbnail lady, run tell that. <laughs> I bet you B has got a video right now. Motherfucker, Amazon stock is at 63K. What I told y'all, sit back and do nothing while I sit back and get this money. I bet you I go to B's page right now. He got a video up talking about it. Salute the biz. Uh, free my free my N word, Claire Booker. Hey man, hey Claire, it's it's funny how this one he talking about definitely do. It's funny how this one junkie. It's funny how this one guy was up in the middle of the night <laughs> reacting to my video. That was crazy. Did y'all see that? When I played that, bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? <laughs> he played F the police. <laughs> uh huh. Mm hmm. Pressure. Pressure. Uh oh. Uh oh. We got smoke. Uh oh. We got smoke. Oh, yeah, he think he real safe. He he talking trash. You don't know the law. Drones for dummies. <laughs> okay. I can't wait for it to be like on Major Pain. Who's the dummy now? When they say, who's the dummy now? Uh uh uh. I watched a clip of his live somewhere, and man, that nigga really obsessed with you, bro. He certified weird. <laughs> Dog, it was like three in the morning. He getting high. Tell my f the police. He still think he young. I think this dude's stuck in a time capsule. Seriously, I think I think it's some of these guys peak. Uh, really young, and whatever they 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 hot spot in life. You know, he always mentioned his father. He's always talking about his father, and I think that's one of the sore spots. His father is gone now, so he uh he just winging it through life now, boy. He don't got nobody to save him if he go to jail. But he might got a new daddy now. Another daddy. We won't say his name, but I think he got another daddy now. Peaked at 17. Oh, he peaked at about 17, 19. 
<laughs> it's got to be. Yeah, I think you got another daddy now. Observing uh, some of these text messages and things like that that I'm seeing, I think he uh, got a new daddy. <laughs> he need to go get his refund. He need to go ahead and get his refund. All right, I don't get an A because I had to just roll. I just rolled me one, so I don't get an A. I get an A for the ab work I've been doing, and I just found out that my stomach is fat, and I can't do abs no more. But I just saw an ab workout that I can do standing up. So I'm about to try this stand-up ab workout. Uh, my kettlebells that I got ain't that heavy. I don't know where my heaviest one went at, but cool. I'll use the lighter one, and hopefully it ain't that heavy. I'm just saying. What's up, who? Are you trying to call him a cracker? What's up, cracking? You might be saying, what's up, what's cracking? This 86K in the building. What kind of curse are you doing, Taryn? You can curse a little bit in the chat. You just can't go too crazy. <laughs> hey, DJ, it's crazy. Uh, high step, high step and knee raises. Yeah, man, it's this dang on air workout. It looked like he marching in place with kettlebells and all kind of crap. So if the kettlebells ain't heavy enough, I'll, I'll hold a 45-pound weight in my hand, and that'll help my little grippers. But, uh. I've been I've been doing pretty good on the workout. Just finding something to eat. Make sure you brace your ankle and that hip when you're working out. No, dog, my hip, all right. I ain't got. I ain't. Thank God, I ain't got to have the hip replacement. All that, like they say, uh, Shannon had to do. Then, man, they ripping Shannon a new one. Man, I almost feel bad for him because he's not taking this as a joke. And I know I gave him shit yesterday. I know that was a frame, a freeze frame. Everybody know that. And I think Carcino explained how messed up his leg has been through football. I didn't know about the two hip replacements because that's I saw that with uh, Phil Jackson. That's tough to deal with. He had both of them done. He had to sit in them high chairs, couldn't go down to certain positions, and and he walked a little different too. So I'm not necessarily concerned with the walk. It's just some of the tight clothes. And I necessarily ain't concerned with that, too, either. Shit, I just had fun with it. We got a little thing going on, so it ain't no big deal to me. Ah, <sighs> Vitamin time. It, it ain't about the knees. <laughs> oh, we know. Oh, we know. Yeah, they froze the picture. It, it did look bad when they freeze. When they, but I don't know why he put both of his hands up. Now the questionable things I said was the damn, uh, replace. They replaced his hips with Big Shirley's. <laughs> uh, the thing that I was looking at is the damn uh, the Hermes bag, and and the. Uh, and the tightness of the clothes. Like, I don't know what it is about the uh, famous black males, the super famous in the media black males. I just don't know why they have to start looking so effeminate. They just can't be normal. One minute he comes across as normal with the do rag, a uh, black and mild. He'll give you the stereotypical black male image. He gives you do rag, liquor drinking, black and mild smoking. 
OG, Big Buff OG, Uncle Shay, Uncle Shannon. And then on the next breath, he gives you this big, burly, twisting, uh, for lack of a better word, sissy, if you will, purse-wearing sissy. And that's just from the appearance. I ain't worried about how he's standing. I never seen men that, uh, that I grew up around. They was always dirty until they got clean. And I know I'm from a small town from the South. We, we, it's only, there was the professional men. They, they wore suits and every day. But they were the uptight, glasses-wearing, bougie dudes. But the regular guys I saw, if he was going to try to be the black and mild guy, they would never wear a, a Hermes bag uh, on their next outfit. They don't, they don't go from black and mild, do-rag, sipping liquor, to Hermes bag, tight clothes, going to get wine. They don't do that. So it just be confusing to me when I see that the intertwining of the two. I, I don't. I know some guys that just be in suits and all that, and they. I guess they wear they Hermes bags, but um, yeah, it's a little off putting. He better stay away from them stylists. He be in high. He be in high I, I think that just come along with the territory. When you get in Hollywood, I told y'all a long time ago, when you sign those contracts, you, you think you're good enough. You think, I done done enough. I done arrived. I done showed somebody something. But the reason why a lot of them women cut their face up, their body up and everything, and a lot of these men are looking the way that they look, I told y'all this a couple years ago. When you go to Hollywood or when you go wherever and you become famous, Everything you think you're doing right, they tell you, no, you don't need to be doing that. You don't need to be eating that. You don't need to be. It's just everything about you is wrong. They try to mold you into somebody different. Yeah, they, uh-uh, you need, to, you need to be around these type of friends. You need to be eating this. You need to be. <laughs> Cat Williams is a legend. They give you a woman. And they might do, because if you notice with these black males, uh, the first person to take them down is the woman that they laid next to. With these black male celebrities, the first woman, not all, not all, but most, the first ones to take them down is the woman next to them. And it's always over the same shit. So it's like, why are y'all doing that? Oh, he cheated on me. Okay. And then she go out and get with the guy that's sleeping with everybody. Okay, so you don't want this guy for cheating on you, but then you go out and sleep with Future? Like, make it make sense. I'll take the women, just leave the purse. <laughs> nah, TJ, it's all a package deal. Uh-uh, you can't, you can't take the women and leave the purse, no. It, it, that don't work like that. It don't work like that, Jack. And just think about it. If if you said old boy from Creed, yeah. Uh, just think about him, man. He was on top of the world. Uh, damn, I forgot his name already. What is his name from Creed? We all done forgot his name already. The, the guy that was running up the goddamn street from the white lady. That's the last thing I'm going to remember for so far until he come out and do something great again. That guy was running from the white lady, but wasn't running fast enough. He was on top of the world. Got with the wrong woman, Jonathan Majors, that's his name. Got with the wrong woman. And it's like when you are a successful black man, you can't just break up with a chick. It always got to be the worst thing in the world. It always got to be a story now. It's like, God damn, is it that big of a deal that y'all are into celebrities' lives like this where it has to be a backstory? The shit ain't work. It just didn't work. These are the breaks. It did not work. I want. I don't know what Common is doing to all them women, but Common is a player. Common, he's a known, slick player. Common going to date every woman from every aspect, from every genre, down from the hood rapper all the way up to the politician, to the soul singer, to the tennis player, and to the ballerina. And they all going to say the same thing. It, it just didn't work out. He was a cool dude. It just didn't work. They don't never say nothing bad about him. So I got to figure out that playerism to, to go ahead. And I'm, I know I'm going to be here for a while, and then I'm getting the hell on away from around you. 
Because Common done figured that out. Boy, he done mastered this shit. Kwame, you hitting mitts? No, nah, I ain't hitting no mitts. Man, I used to uh, hit the mitts when I was in Orlando and L.A., but I didn't get this shoulder, this uh, labrum tear in my shoulder fix. So sometimes no goddamn boxing workouts be making my shoulder feel like it's about to fall off. But every now and again, I go out there and mess around. That boxing shit ain't no joke. <laughs> Common been with the tennis player, comedian, and Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah, I gotta figure that shit out, boy. I gotta spring. I gotta. Hey, uh, Common got his mama's cooking, boy. He know how to get away from you without the drama. Hey, look here. Whatever it is, it's just it's just not gonna work. You know, I'm gonna get back to my soul music. You is too, Coco. Oh, you talking to somebody else? Oh, Coco say common is fine. Well, shit, I need to work on my fine then because I, shit, they can't let go when I got down. They want to tell all kind of lies about me. Oh, they want to break, leave me mad. Fuck that nigga. I ain't talking to him no more. Stinking son, bitch. <laughs> Damn, baby. A couple days ago, you was loving me. What the hell going on? Yeah, I don't know how it go for y'all, but it, it it don't go that way for me. Mm -mm. Either they can't let go or they go crazy. Fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, running on the treadmill is boring as hell. That's why I don't just do it. Oh, common light skin. Oh, shit. You right. My bad. Let me stay in my dark ass lane. Let me stay in my little black boy lane. And Common got the good guy image, so it'll make a woman look stupid to be the first one. If one of them ever break the mold, then the rest of them will start telling the truth. Yeah, he wasn't shit, girl. He a manipulating bastard. He was cheating the whole time. I really think he's insensitive. The floodgates open up. Yeah, he did that to me too, girl. <laughs> All you got to do is tell them it's your fault. All you got to do is tell them it's their fault. It's all your fault? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, I can't do that. I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah, I ain't with all that shit. Oh, so that's how Usher and them been getting away with this shit. They just confessing. Everything that I've been doing is all bad. I got a chick on the side, crib in the ride, telling you so many lies. There ain't no good. It's all bad. So if I just do all that shit, then they going to goddamn cry with me and stay with me and give me something. <laughs> I didn't hit it with that usher. No, I was out doing my dirt. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, I gotta goddamn. I gotta do that usher. Everything that I've been doing is all bad. I got a chick on the side, crib and a ride. <laughs> to my ghost though. Uh, Styles, my husband's lock said no. <laughs> oh man, damn, we thirty three minutes in and I ain't get to not one damn news story yet. Ain't this something? I got news. I got sports. I got news. I got sports, and I got swagger, Dad. I ain't roll up yet. I mean, I ain't light up yet. Hold on, let me get there. Let this boy know. Hold on, let me let somebody know something, man. Since he like he liked this shit. I believe he liked it. I really do. <laughs> you chuck it on, on that one. You chuck it on this one. You chuck it on your mother and you chuck it on your father. You chuck it on your brother and you chuck it on your sister. You chuck it on that one and you chuck it on me. <laughs> oh shit. Hey, this nigga this nigga responded with fuck the police. <laughs> that nigga responded with F the police, boy. He ain't like this shit here. Yeah. 
Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you Hey, come another live. Fuck the police. Fuck, fuck, fuck the police. Here come another live, boy. You finna be bad. 86K. Hey, here come another live, boy. Fuck the police. <laughs> I know how to make these niggas. I know how to make these niggas bad, man. I told these niggas I'm gonna have fun with these niggas. These niggas is mad about nothing, man. <laughs> this just I'm just YouTubing, bro. I don't know what you niggas so mad about, man. Y'all gotta stop this, man. Can we just can we just be cool, man? God damn. Niggas with all this beefing and they squabbling out here now. Niggas with all this this all this beefing and squabbling. All I want to know is with one simple question. What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Yeah, that's all I want to know. I ain't with all the the tongue wrestling and riffing. What you gonna do? You said you a bad boy, and, and I, I said I was a sidewalk nigga. So the question is, what you gonna do when they come for you, bad boys, bad boys? I just want to know that. You know what I mean? I know how them white boys get you niggas not to put y'all motherfucking hands on them. See, they don't live by no street code, no street rule. They let you know right now, nigga, you going to jail or you going to get shot graveyard dead like Grady Judd. And so I think you Negroes respect that a little bit better. Not all Negroes. I'm talking about you unruly Negroes that just bother people for no reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to know what you're going to do when they come for you. He about to play Bone Thugs and Harmony. <laughs> he sees nothing, didn't he? <laughs> no, he bet not play no motherfucking bone thugs in harmony. I'm gonna die laughing. He bet not play no bone thugs in harmony around me. I am gonna crack up laughing. He bet not. Hold up. Let me uh share the screen with this. Let's get this story. Kwame the police? No, no, no. I'm a civilian. See, you niggas got it misconstrued. See, I told you now, don't you bother no sidewalk, nigga. There's cracks in the sidewalk and there's taxes on the sidewalk. And if I got to do either of the two, step over taxes and, and step over cracks and pay taxes, nigga, I'm a civilian. So shut up, <laughs> nigga. I want to know what he going to do when they come for him, bad boys, bad boys. Yeah, I want to know. Now, we got, uh, I'm going to move this down. We got pink book lessons in the house again. Salute to your pink book lessons. I wake up with a healthy dosage of this stuff. She don't play. She don't curse. She just get it in. You can, you can receive it. Some people can receive mine too. But everybody can receive this. And she's a woman, a black woman. So you can't hate. She's just giving her opinion. And it's going to be respected. So I'm going to play it. Fair use. Let's get to the 30 homes. This woman stole 30 homes in Detroit. This is supposed to be a woman in Detroit now. She, uh, Pink Book Lessons is calling her the Detroit OG. I like these names. <laughs> they, they coming up with city girl mayor and, and all this other stuff. Now we got the Detroit OG. Yeah, this is the Detroit OG. She allegedly took 30 houses. Let's get to it. I believe the younger ones got it from the OGs. We have another OG city girl that ended up as a subject of a press release posted by the United States Attorney's Office, Eastern District of Michigan. A Detroit woman serving as a director of a nonprofit is being accused of targeting low income residents of Detroit and stealing their homes. This scam was massive on a local level. The feds say the woman stole 30 properties as a part of her scheme. She's being accused of committing deed fraud. We're going to get into it, but first, take a second to make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And
I mean, this real, this real nigga sh, you know what I'm saying? This real in word sh. I mean, I don't see nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's real nigga sh. <laughs> Hold on, TP say what? My mind tainted. I could never call a cop. Your mind tainted. You could never call a cop. So if a woman whooping your ass, what you do? You slap the shit out of her or do you call 911 to get her crazy ass up out of here? Let's test what you do. A woman pull out a knife or she's swinging on you, damaging your car outside of your home with a gas can. What do you do? You go out there and fight her, you shoot her, or do you call the cop? Hey, some of you cats too real. <laughs> some of you niggas just too real, boy. I swear. <laughs> Y'all some real niggas, boy. <laughs> Bring your ass around here if you want to. 911 to be the first thing I call as I'm grabbing something. <laughs> yeah, 911 is just to make sure whose side they on. God damn it. Hey, look here. I'm going to be the tall nigga with the gun. You shoot at the short niggas with the guns, okay? Okay, ready, break. <laughs> I'm going to be the tall guy with the gun. Shoot at the short guys with the gun. How are we going to know who's shorter? Trust me, everybody going to be shorter than me. Just make sure you pop everybody that's shorter than seven foot. Click the notification tonight. That's according to the latest Detroit City Future Study. It shows white mortgage applications have a higher approval rate compared to black applicants. Seven Action News reporter Faraz Javid gives us an in-depth look at this disturbing problem that's been going on for decades and how it could stunt the community's growth. Metro Detroit is considered the nation's mortgage capital, but even then, most black borrowers are still getting rejected as they chase their dream home. There's a 13% denial rate for white borrowers and a 27% denial rate for African Americans. Okay, okay. I can't tell no man how to come now. That man say, hey, look here, in, te in Texas, swing, swing at your own risk, male or female. I mean, shit. Hey, that's T. Smith. Words from T. Smith. So females, if y'all swing at this brother, T. Smith, he whipping your ass. <laughs> oh my brother a lot of my brothers certified but they know i ain't certified so i got damn it don't put your stupid ass rules on me i told my brothers them y'all niggas stupid y'all got limitations y'all got motherfuckers telling y'all what y'all can and can't do or you might not have nobody telling you what you can and can't do but these rules you got tell you what you can and can't do i don't got no motherfucking rule so that makes me dangerous ain't there a rule that's i'm bound to Fuck your rules. Mm -hmm. The one rule is leave me the fuck alone. That's the only rule I go by. Because guess what? I don't bother nobody else. So leave me the fuck alone. Because mm -hmm. them groups ain't going to be in that cell with you. When you get arrested, you go to the hospital, if something happened to you, you're going to be in there by yourself. So fuck all these rules for the group. Mm -mm. American borrowers just in 2020. And if an applicant moves forward, Steve Tom Kowiak from Fair Housing Center says the next blow comes during the appraisal step. The lending process overall, there's two, I think 50% of it centers on the borrower. The other 50% 50, 50 of it centers on the appraisal of the home. It's a standard requirement in every loan application that the appraisal be performed. And we are seeing an uptick in appraisal complaints. Steve says the challenges also exist for homeowners trying to sell their property. They pull down from the walls any art objects, any pictures, anything that would indicate the home's owned by a black family. And they would have someone else stand in when the appraiser has to make a home visit to the home that's being appraised. And they then saw dramatic increases in the appraised value of the home. This document shows lender denial rate in Detroit. In 2020, the highest was 89.6%. If lenders keep denying African-American borrowers, what, what happens to the city? Like, how is the city going to be impacted? That's a real problem with lending discrimination. There's a, there's a lot of effects from that. Uh, you destabilize communities. You decrease home ownership rates. You kind of force people into more of a transient lifestyle from home to home to home. Um, some are in substandard housing because of it.
no doubt about it. There are definitely issues of mortgage discrimination, an uptick in appraisal complaints, low economic development, higher property taxes, and other factors that make home ownership difficult for Black Americans in Detroit. Obtaining property isn't so simple for a lot of Hold on now. We're going to have to talk to Anton Daniels. Anton Daniels said he killing it up there in Detroit. Said Detroit is the shit. Kwame don't want to ever join no groups. No, nah, I can see. Listen, <clears throat> I'm not like most people. Most people don't tell the truth. You know, my brothers are who they are. Uh, but I have the um, I have the understanding when I watch some of my brother's discovery and you read some of their transcripts, the people who told on him on them was the niggas that was telling them they love him for life. The people who told everything they did, the people who told the old lady what they was doing was the niggas that was with them every day. So just for that reason alone, it turned me into more of a loner. I fuck with you now, but it turned me into more of a loner. If I'm going to go off, I don't want no dudes in my business. I really don't like women in my business either. If a woman is too inquiring about my business, I really don't trust her. I really don't like her. Because it's like you're trying to get information. What are you trying to do with this information? And, you know, people can have their own, you know, they can believe in this street code and this real nigga shit all they want to. Um, but I'm not saying it happened for you or to your family. But the majority of the situations I saw, and I got a lot of brothers and every last one of them, somebody that was right next to him was running their mouth. Somebody that was right next to him, what that he would ride or die for. Wasn't putting no money on his books. Uh, they was always snooping around the baby mama house when they got arrested. So I just don't, I just don't agree with this, this, that shit y'all be talking about. And I don't. I know how I'm coming. I know I ain't gonna tell on me. I know I really like me even when it during downtime. So I like me. Yeah. You know. <laughs> the, the streets to me is just a bunch of motherfuckers trying to play and rob on each other that's all it is a bunch of cutthroat motherfuckers trying to figure out who can cutthroat each other the fastest and the best and all y'all niggas sleeping with each other girls and passing around that shit to each other so nah I don't need no motherfucking group I think the strongest group I got is me and then you know if something go down then I got then I got let's we can see who really fuck with you then when something go down but other than that you can keep all that shit i don't need no bunch of backstabbing pussy niggas around me uh-uh i'm sorry if you got to tell somebody you street nine times out of ten you not street because any smart street person know that that is not something you should go around telling somebody the baddest street motherfuckers i know you think they're not that you would never know and I'm more scared of the corporate thugs than I am any nigga toting a gun. Them corporate thugs will kill you while you alive, nigga. They start off with your reputation and therefore anything is an open door for to happen to you then. They start with your reputation. That's the one thing you're supposed to guard, nigga. Fuck a nigga with a gun. You got to guard your reputation. That's number one. Because when public opinion think that things are supposed to happen to you, that's when they allow it. That's when they don't care so public your your image is the first thing you protect second thing you keep a bunch of niggas out your business third thing find you a woman or two that understand you are a man you are flawed just like they are but they ride or die for you whenever the whenever they need to you find that you got you something there boy what's up kev yeah you find you find you something like that you know and hey, you niggas that be acting hard in front of women man stop that shit man that is corny as hell y'all need to stop that there's too many dudes that's crashing out for women it's dudes that man it's a nigga that called a nigga the other day he called a nigga just to show out in front of a girl hey man you know i get down right i'm a killer you know what's up but he he talking like this in front of a female that he just met to try to get this woman to know and the dude ain't no bitch ass nigga he'll he'll get on he'll get on boy he'll get on somebody ass pause but what make it fake is that this is your persona that you're trying to make this girl understand in order for her to like you because that's the new wave girls like dudes that'll crash out for them 
So he put in his bid to let her know, nigga, I'm one of them crash out type of nigga. And girls find that attractive. I don't know why. I won't crash out for you, baby. <laughs> no. You could be wrong. But if a nigga disrespect you and you were the right and we together, then shit. And if we ain't going to be no crash out, we going to be in the right. I was standing up for a black woman. And you make sure you let them know that. <laughs> With all this goddamn dust settled, you better make sure you let them know that. That shit, the, the, the dudes that do that, man, stay the fuck away from me, man. If I know you that soft and you that weak to crash out, and, and what's up with you married men? Some of you men that's married, y'all niggas tripping. You niggas that's married and got a whole wife and a family. I see, maybe that's why I joke so much and shit like that, because if I had a wife, I'm not playing and joking with you niggas. That's, this is an extra level of protection that I got to add. I'm not threatening to come to your city because then I, that means I'm going to leave my wife and kids alone. And I know what's going to happen with a woman left alone. I, I'm not inviting that in my home, so I'm going to be extra pussy. I'm going to let you niggas think you real little mug. Just as long as you don't come nowhere near me or my wife. I'll let you niggas think you tough as nail. But we got too many men that like, God damn, y'all get mad about everything. Me, I was a young man, quiet for 20 years. I don't think you niggas could have done that. You niggas crash out over everything. Niggas say something wrong to you. Y'all niggas ready to meet these niggas in a different city. It's like, really, nigga? I thought you said you had all this going on. This nigga, you about to trade all that in for, for two hots in a cot with a bunch of niggas shitting in steel toilets and you drinking out the top of it, putting up sheets to shit. Wearing boots in the shower. That's what you want to trade all that in for? Just for your pride? You niggas want to trade all that in to show some people that you tell. Meek Mill said he ready to die about this shit. I said, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> and this nigga about to trade in his Bentley and penthouses and all this over what a nigga said. Man, thank the Lord I didn't get that gene that I traded and traded in my life for words. Thank the Lord I didn't get that weak gene that I want to trade in my life for what some nigga done said. Now, I will say something back. I just mastered the gift of being able to say something back to you that probably hurt you more than it hurt me. Some women attracted to that and ride until they literally die. Oh, absolutely. Hey, Doves, that's what these women looking for now. They looking for a nigga to talk like that. Listen, he's not doing that because women are not attracted to it. Uh, most men only do shit that women like. Man, niggas start putting rims on their car and shit. The girls start liking it. See, it's, it's forward thinkers and there's other dudes that just copy what other niggas do. So the forward thinking men, they be like, shit, I'm doing this for me. This shit going to be fly. And I know them hoes going to jock. And, and they'll go out and put rims on their car. It'll be other dudes that'll see the reaction of the girls and say, oh, shoot. I'm, not only am I going to put rims on my car, I'm going to go get the same rims dude had so that I can get the same girls. That That's the way it works. But once they see that women like it, hey, all these dudes go do it. They call the average guy corny. Shit, you better be. Hey, that sounds like you free to me, my nigga. You better stay being corny. That ain't stopped you from getting nobody. Uh, some of them women legs in the air. And that ain't stopped you from getting one of them to bend over. One or two of them to bend over for you. The ones that need a nigga to shoot up the, the place and, and do all that dumb shit. You better let them niggas have them. Because guess what? At a certain age, after they finish chasing the niggas that shoot up the place, they're going to be chasing you. You drunk. Let me put your dumb ass about it here. Everybody that watched my channel know that I'm, I'm not even drinking right now. So everybody who watched my channel know that. So anybody who coming here trolling and saying that, just throw their ass up out of here. We ain't going to waste no time with them. Just like the water boy. Get her country ass up out of here. She not at knife with a deadly weapon. That's an assault. Police... Go on, get her country ass up out of here. Yeah, you just got, you just got thrown up out of here, man. Sorry, you can't enjoy the fun no more. 
But you better keep being called corny. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You you free while you corny. Eh? You don't hear me fitting the uh, stereotypes. You don't hear me saying I'm no street nigga. I'm no thug nigga. <laughs> I say I'm a sidewalk nigga. I don't got to be all that. These shoulders and hands still got damn work from the sidewalk. I don't got to label myself some stupid shit just so my shoulders and my hands can work. And this big old hops oiled up beautiful thing in my pocket. You know, but it is what it is. I understand that that ain't going to save you. So I don't walk around like I'm the toughest guy in the world. I'm a sidewalk. I could be corny. I could be whatever else. I don't give a damn. <laughs> nigga, I'm going to live, nigga. Got to do all that to get no bra. You crazy. Kwame is dude. Kwame is dudes that will get around females and pull out bills, bills of money, uh, and act like they don't know what what to do with it. <laughs> oh shit! I got homeboys that still do that. Man, them niggas will get they check, get they check. Wait, wait till that income tax money hit. Man, it's gonna be niggas in the club pulling out hundreds in front of girl. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna buy one drink, and they ain't gonna take out no card. They ain't gonna take out twenty dollars. They're going to pull all the wad out, the big knot out, look through it, look through it a little bit, and then pull out the 20 and pay for the drink so the girls can see and then get mad when the, when that's all the girl like them for. I'm like, nigga, you didn't want that girl to see you. Nigga, you gave that girl exactly what she wanted to see. She saw that water cash. She gave you a little ass, but she thought, hey, I was going to get me some water cash. So it's all about what you promote. You niggas promote that money and then get mad when she wants some. Same thing I say to these women. Y'all want to promote y'all booty. Not all, but y'all want to promote that ass and then get mad when a nigga want a little taste of it. It, ain't, it don't work that way. Whatever, However you promote yourself, that's what people are going to think. Yeah, you promoting that shit. I'm a taxpaying citizen. The police work for me. Yeah, you got damn right. They work for me too. Plus, if you don't get a documentation of this is what I'm saying. I don't want to be in a jail cell because of none of you niggas. See, if you don't document things that happen, that the first thing, because you're not going to get judged by, you're not going to be judged by uh, your peers. You're not. You're going to be judged by a bunch of white folks. Black people don't do jury duty. I don't even know why. Man, I got some jury duty papers come to this motherfucker. And I said, look here, man. My brothers is felons. And God damn it, I don't think he did nothing wrong. That's what I told him. I said, hey, look here. I don't think he did nothing wrong. You know? And they looked up my history. They said, oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. We, this nigga, he ain't getting on this jury. I make sure I get off the goddamn jury. Y'all do too. So stop fretting. So you're not going to get judged by your peers. That's not racism. It's niggas don't want to be on no fucking jury. Let's keep it real. Some people in the chat say they didn't even want to call the police. So let's keep it. Let's call it a spade a spade. Let's keep it a buck. All right. Every time you send me some jury duty papers, you're not going to want me on my, that jury. That nigga going to be free. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you're not going to be judged by your peers. So I'm smart enough to know documentation rule the nation, nigga not gonna live by no street code where you just get fucked with and you don't say nothing and these niggas got a gang of niggas after you no i'm gonna put a gang on your ass too them boys in blue and it's just for documentation so in case shit happen people can explain why shit happened yeah you, you fucking with this boy and this boy done nutted up and don't get mad now that boy been saying for three years leave him the fuck alone and now you see why you should leave this boy alone he been warning you and I, now all the white people hear me saying, leave me the fuck alone. They don't see an aggressive bone in my body when it comes to fucking with people. Unless they fuck with me. I'm very simple. Very cut and dry. You leave me alone, I leave you alone. Period. I talk my shit just like anybody else talk their shit. But I'm not a criminal. I'm not just going to go out here and think that I'm the baddest man in the land. And I just get to put my hands on people or do something to people. Hell no. It's not going to happen. Mm -mm. Some of y'all niggas need to learn how to prevent things. You let most of these niggas know you willing to call the goddamn police. Most of these bitch ass niggas will call you a bitch. Oh, bitch ass nigga. Uh, shit. Uh, fuck you, man. I ain't this nigga the police. Cool. I'd rather be the police than scrimp with your dumb ass. 
Now go on about your motherfucking business because now you done gave me the respect that you get them white boy. And that's the only thing it is. Our community fucked up because we don't snitch. Because we keep thinking civilians is, is street niggas. The whole goddamn black community think they gang members or some shit. The fuck is wrong with y'all? Nigga, you lost your goddamn mind. This is the reason why we don't have safe communities. Men and women that are not in the street life do not say shit because they are afraid. So now their kids are at risk. So now I, I'm openly said, nigga, you better leave me the fuck alone. Now, if it don't got nothing to do with me, am I gonna go out my way to tell on you? Yeah, no, I ain't gonna do all that shit. No, I'm not saying that, nigga. But I'm saying as a whole, the reason why our community suck is because we we have a unhealthy thing that go in our community that black people as a whole are not supposed to tell about crimes and you got whack 100 you got all these people telling you if a person is a civilian you should know better than to do a crime around them you should know better you're supposed to keep street shit street but now it's so blended that you have a kid that's in college thinking he's a street cat it's like what the fuck I never thought I was a street cat. I saw what the dumb shit that street niggas do. And I'm like, you niggas, what the fuck? You know you finna go to jail, right? I don't give a fuck, nigga. I'm real, nigga. Oh, yeah, I ain't no street nigga. You got to goddamn lose your mind almost to be a street nigga. <laughs> this shit don't make no sense. This shit don't make no sense. If this was considered a street nigga, and see, I'm not talking about my brothers in a sense because my brothers went to jail for hustling. There's a difference between hustlers and street niggas. And, I, and don't confuse the two. There's some guys out there that just hustled a little weed. They hustled a little, you know, little pieces here and there. They wasn't street cats. They were just hustlers. And a lot of a lot of people got trapped up in that hustler lane. This street cat shit is something different. These people just killing for no reason. Ain't no money in it. Most street cats broke than a motherfucker. Now the hustlers are not broke. Hustlers know better than to go to killing and doing all this dumb shit because it slow up the hustle. There's a difference between hustlers and street niggas. Street niggas are just violent. They just don't make no sense. They just want to do dumb shit. They'll show out. They'll tell on themselves. A hustler can get violent, but he's only violent over his money and over his property. You going to prison, friend? I cannot. Hell yeah, I'm telling on your ass. You fuck that. If you was my friend and you doing something, no, nah, I see. I'm not going. I'm not going to go around you. Gangsters are gangsters different than killers. See, in Memphis, that's something different. Y'all got a different lingo. I don't know how y'all call it, but in the South, where I'm from, in Georgia, we we had the hustlers, we had the street cats, the ones that say they gangster. They they'll do whatever, nigga. They getting on top of your head. But there's some straight up just hustlers. Them niggas just want their money. And they'll keep some street cats around them to help them protect the money. But I'm not going with you. Shit. When my brothers was doing something stupid, I, hey, where you finna go? Oh, man, you dumber than a motherfucker. You finna go over there? Oh, I ain't going. Holla at you. Salute to you, style. I'm not going with you. True story. Came back home from college, went to the club, uh, former homeboy, and now he a former homeboy, huh? <laughs> yeah. TP tried to have his toe on one side of the street. He, TP, you want to have one leg on the sidewalk and one leg in the road. All right, now you're going to get that goddamn foot ran over. You can't have one leg on the sidewalk, boy, and one leg in the streets. It ain't going to work that way. Somebody going to smash that goddamn foot. See, he went to the club, former homeboy, car was getting towed. He shot the driver, he shot the driver point blank. I got in my car, went back to school, didn't come back. <laughs> yeah, your ass better go back to school. Cause guess what would happen? They would have said TP was right there with him. You would have been the biggest caller because you was in college. So now you'd have been all in the story. That's crazy. Now think about this now. The only reason why I'm, I can't think for the psyche of your friend, of your former friend, but all of that had to been just ego and the embarrassment of him being told in front of the club. Because just think about it. You've been to throw your life away over a guy that got nothing to do. And I guarantee you the tow truck driver was black. 
There's no way you telling me he shot a white man point blank range for towing his car. Was he white or black, TP? Y'all don't hear me. We finna build this morning. Is he white or black, TP? Huh? TP, let me know. Why the black? He was white. So was your friend white that shot him? Or was he black? Oh, your boy tough. He shot a white man in the face. Stop playing. Huh? So your black friend shot a white guy in the face. Oh shit, where you from? Where you from TV? TP had a black friend that shot a white guy in the face. They gave him 40 years to life. That's what EJ said. I'm pretty sure he got probably life. That because first of all, not to say he should have got uh asking too many questions. He's talking about asking too many questions. So he was a black guy that shot a white guy for towing his truck. <laughs> where you from is actually insane. Yeah, where where this nigga from? He can't be from the south. TP talking about he wasn't my friend. <laughs> hey. Man, look here. You hang around niggas that'll shoot a nigga over a toy. I, I, I gotta think different of you now, TP. You hang you said your former friend, so of course he's probably in jail. But you hang around people that got less going on to the point to where one, you can't pay for your car that you purchase or, or whatever. Two, you're gonna compound the problem by shooting somebody, especially in front of everybody man take this goddamn car man i'm gonna ride with the girl i met in the club she might leave me that night because goddamn i don't know i'll be like look here man now this is my home girl car i'll get it out in the morning or some shit. but that's crazy tp i'm glad you got up out of there man i hope you don't got a lot of friends the driver was talking reckless shit, i done seen south beach toe Shit, they be talking crazy. You should have paid your goddamn bill. Don't blame it on me. This isn't that. Like, if I'm ever in that tow situation, I'm going to just act like it ain't my car. You ain't got no win. You ain't got no win. No, I ain't all over the place. I'm right on your ass, banning you out my chat. I ain't all over the uh, place, truth teller. That was quick. You see how fast that was? And if you known I was going to be all over the place, you should have known I was going to see that. <laughs> now Riva Doce the driver was talking reckless but I can pretty much understand that though I would act like that's not my car yeah Bernice that boy my whole girl Bernice with them dread she gonna talk crazy and she'll put hands on your ass so you can't blame it on them I'm not going nowhere near I know I ain't paid a bill what the hell am I gonna argue with this person for I'm not going nowhere cause look hey cuz let this be a lesson to you man when you going up there to steal them people's shit, well, you ain't really stealing people's shit. You taking y'all property back. But when you go there to take that property back, them people will mess around and shoot you, bro. You got to be careful. These some crazy thinking motherfuckers. Is seven years enough for Chad Wheeler? So he got seven years of beating a woman in the enter of life. What did he get charged with? He should have got a charge with attempted murder. Bernice could take my car. I would give her the keys. <laughs> hey, Mr. Kiwi, for real. These people be wanting to argue with the tow truck driver like they got something to do with it. They ain't got nothing to do with nothing. I'm giving them them keys and I'm gone. But see, I'm going to try to finesse. I'm, I'm going to try to finesse cuz too. Pay your bill, uh-uh. 
I'm gonna have them motherfucking rims up here in the garage. Hell yeah. And when I bring the car out and I had to go in the mall, I'm gonna valet that motherfucker. And I'm gonna tiptoe. I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you, hey valet, put cones around this motherfucker. So can't nobody come up here. There's a lot of people want to steal my shit. I'm gonna have the police looking for you already, nigga. I'm gonna have the police looking for you already. They gonna think you part of a boosting crew. Them. And for those who own property, maintaining their property is also a struggle, especially for low income residents and those living on fixed incomes. Years ago, a lot of people in Detroit experienced large increases in property taxes, causing a lot of foreclosures. You had a lot of outside investors coming in, raising prices like crazy, and making it even more difficult for the people that's actually from the city. Which is why organizations like the United Community Housing Coalition are so important to the community. Short for UCHC, if you want to know what they do, they'll tell you on their website. Take a look. It says, our services help families retain their homes permanently, preserving family assets, and protecting neighborhoods from blight caused by vacant housing. The Make It Home program is a program where people who are living in foreclosed homes get the opportunity to purchase that home rather than have it go to the auction. They asked me what was going on. I explained to them my problem. And from there, they just took me by the hand and walked me through the whole process. We are celebrating 104 new homeowners, um, which brings the total up to 1,500 in the program's history. It's a great program in the sense of people don't have to worry about where they're going to live. And that's the most important thing. It gives us low income and people the chance to own a home and keep it up. To have with organizations like these, it helps the community. It keeps people in the community and keep homes occupied instead of being vacant. We work with community partners who knock on doors to let clients know about us. The Wayne County Treasurer also shares our information. So it's really a joint team effort between a bunch of different entities. Make It Home is just one of the programs organized and operated by UCHC in Detroit. They provide many services from help with evictions to home repairs and foreclosure prevention. So the community was shocked to hear the recent news about one of the organization's directors, Zena Thomas. In January 2022, the OG boss chick posted this to her followers, stepping into my 58th birthday like a boss. Well, two years later, at the tender age of 60, she's about to step into an orange prison jumpsuit like a boss. Damn, she about to go to prison? You said migrants are about to flood the city of Detroit? What do you mean? The, uh, Detroit is a sanctuary city? Don't tell me Detroit is a sanctuary city as well. And don't tell me this lady about to go to prison at 60 years old. Please don't tell me that. I don't want this lady to go to prison at 60. Man, get that lady probation and make her pay fine. Please, 60 years old. Is this her first offense? There's plenty of Hispanics in Detroit. They tell me, <laughs> y'all crazy, man. That's bliss to teeth. The D been took. They have uh, Mandarin in the airport. They here now. Sanctuary cities are being dismantled. So they are sanctuary. The D. Uh, they up there getting all the contracting work because black people scamming contractors. Oh man. That's crazy. <laughs> what is it with these older people out here committing crime? Um, well, a lot of the older women, they, they've gone through their whole life without getting checked on anything. They've created some spoiled kids. I promise. I said this three years ago. I, I gave the analogy. If you're raising a boy and you're raising a girl in the house and you raise that boy with rules, morals, respect, and you tell him when he go when he oversteps and then you don't really do the same thing for a female and they grow up this is what you get i learned a lot of asians own property in detroit yeah go to michigan and fuck around and find out you damn we sure will find out out there in detroit they'll whoop your ass up there boy
people in cars with DJ Envious and cahoots with DJ Envious. <laughs> As a licensed real estate agent and broker, she's been selling homes in the Wayne County area. But according to the feds, she didn't have permission from the homeowners. They're saying that Triple OG Zena was fraudulently signing the homes over to an imaginary person before selling the properties to buyers and transferring all of the proceeds to her own bank account. She worked as a director of home ownership programs for the local nonprofit where she was responsible for overseeing programs like Make It Home. Zena used her position to take advantage of vulnerable homeowners. She was supposed to be making life better for them, but she ended up stealing their homes, selling them, and profiting from those sales. Just last week, the alleged property D scammer was arrested after being investigated by the feds, where prosecutors say she stole more than 30 properties across Wayne County, most of them in Detroit. And get this, according to the criminal complaint, the triple OG city girl was living in one of those properties involved in the scheme. A leader at a Detroit nonprofit is accused of preying on low income residents and stealing their homes. Federal officials say more than 30 houses in Wayne County, primarily in Detroit, were impacted by the scheme that targeted those at risk of facing tax foreclosure. CBS News Detroit's Andres Gutierrez is at the U.S. District Courthouse with reaction. According to the federal complaint, the FBI started looking into Xenia Thomas, the director of homeownership programs at the United Community Housing Coalition last November, when a special unit within Wayne County suspected she was filing fraudulent quick claim deeds and falsifying documents. This is a pervasive crime that occurs. The problem is that the the entry level for the U.S. Attorney's Office and the Department of Justice is higher than the typical uh, fraud that occurs. But in this case, federal investigators discovered Thomas allegedly conspired to steal over 30 properties from low-income residents. Here's how the feds say the scheme worked. Thomas allegedly filed a number of phony deeds who would then transfer the target properties from the victim owners to interim owners who didn't exist before ultimately selling the house to unsuspecting third parties. And you seemingly have a number of people who are unindicted co-conspirators. Uh, those are people who are typically cooperating. There's also, I'm sure, other people who uh, will be interviewed and and, uh, and will either cooperate or not. The United Community Housing Coalition says they're cooperating with the investigation and the individuals involved have been suspended. It's just disheartening that uh, an employee of a nonprofit um, would you know take advantage of their position. Other housing advocates say this is an isolated incident that casts a shadow on their mission to help the community. So this happens, um, unfortunately, uh, and, and mostly to vulnerable people, either economically disadvantaged, uh, senior citizens, right? We see a lot of times that these kind of crimes happen to Free my nigga Black Thoughts. Black Thoughts said the new white supremacy is all from black people. We are supposed to remain quiet because we black out here. We black out here. Free my nigga Black Thoughts. I kind of agree with that Black Thoughts. So free my nigga KB. <laughs> free, free us. Because if you can't see that, I've been playing that. A lot of people have been... And I wanted to make sure I'm playing videos of other people that are sharing the same sentiment so they can't just say, this is what Kwame think. There's other people seeing this. O'Shea Duke Jackson, shout out to O'Shea. He's showing you lots of videos where the people who are doing the most mischievous dirt is black on black. It's not just crime. You see what this young brother put in the chat. He said the black contractors are ripping each other off. So black folks have been not only have we been trained not to deal with our own kind, but when we do, our own kind rip us off faster than they do white folks. They say Brett Favre needs to go to jail. Yeah, but he probably does. And if it, if he did what they said he did, because he's suing at you, then uh, he definitely probably need to go. But he's protected. And that's Brett Favre. You know where he lives? And he ain't take no money from white folks. He took tax dollars that most white people don't believe that black folks deserve. So if you're waiting on Brett Favre to go to jail, you're going to be waiting a long time. They're not going to lock Brett Favre up in Mississippi for no beeps, for no Mondays. I'm telling you that right now. Lock her up. She knew what she was doing. Oh, Lord. That, that, that Genesis 1. Free, free Genesis 1. Free my homegirl, Genesis 1. Free Genesis 1. Salute to you. Canada's finest. Free her. <laughs> we got to remember as well, it's also conditioning and learned behavior. It's also Negroes ripping other Negroes off. So it is learned behavior. You're right.
disadvantaged people. Um, but there are a lot of organizations out here that are doing good. The United Community Housing Coalition works with the city of Detroit, who said in a statement they're aware of the investigation for several months and don't believe it has affected the quality service the city of Detroit is receiving from UCHC. And <clears throat> Free Miss Akimi as well. Uh, we got two sisters stepping out of line. Uh, ladies, get back in line. Stay on cold. Stay on cold, ladies. Um, that's all I'm going to say. Stay on cold. Stay on cold. <laughs> in our right to counsel and other programs in Detroit, Andres Gutierrez, CBS News, Detroit. Apparently, the investigation started back in November 2023. The feds went into the organization and got some of the other employees to cooperate with them. Triple OG City Girl Zena was using work computers and her work email to commit fraud. Wow, how stupid would I be to do that? I know one thing, I keep seeing a lot of these older boss chicks getting caught up, but they're not getting away with it these days. We're talking about a grandmother out here scheming and scamming like this, destroying the lives of the low income and the elderly at the most vulnerable time of their lives. It's really disgusting and 1,000% out of order. Let's go ahead and get the conversation started. Let me know what you think about this below. Special thank you to Mr. Paul B. and Lash. I certainly appreciate you all for your support, as well as our sister, Tanette and SL. Yeah, salute to Paul B. and Tanette and SL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Salute to all of them. Salute to Peak Book Lesson. Letting the brother use the video and she never flags. Salute to her. Y'all go sub up. Make sure you watch like I watch. Um, we also got Anton Daniels. Shout out to Anton Daniels. He found a video that of uh, old sleepy, old sleepy sleep. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. I want to do this one first. This O'Shea Duke Jackson, and then we'll get the old sleepy sleep. We'll get the sleepy sleep. Yeah, all definitely all the people rip off. You see what they they say Brett Farm just did. Y'all got to see this. I think it, it started from right here. Who is infamous for doing everything but the right thing. There is the lovely Natalie Hall. Mrs. I love to make my coworkers or workers clap cheeks or get fired. There's Fannie Willis, who's also, if you clap these cheeks, then I will... Natalie Hall, if you're looking for a donor, you got one in me, boo. You got a donor in me. That's all it is. I think they just harassing you, Miss Natalie. Your little fine self. You just being harassed. Make you an attorney on the Donald Trump case. And then there's Latoya Cantrell. You got Monique Owen. That wasn't East Point. They got rid of her. We got Latoya Cantrell. Latoya Cantrell is actually from California. She's a West Coast chick, but moved to New Orleans, where a lot of this corrupt behavior might be a little bit more acceptable in all black cities. Not to say that New Orleans is corrupt, but I do notice that these black cities love the buffoonery. These black cities love more of, um, they're a little bit more lenient, right? And I'm saying that as a black person. You know, you can get a little bit more away with things in Atlanta, New Orleans, Memphis, Detroit, Jackson, Mississippi. Then you don't get away with the sacrament. We know that. So Latoya Cantrell was married to Mr. Jason Cantrell. He died. It's too bad while he was living, and he was also an attorney, she was having allegedly a sexual relationship with her own police officer, a guy by the name of Vabby. Now, she has denied these charges. Let's play this clip here. All expenses incurred doing business on behalf of the city of New Orleans will not be reimbursed to the city of New Orleans. One thing is. I just had an epiphany. I think I need to get in politics. Yeah, I, I just think I can make a change. And if I don't make a change, one of these powerful women will just, you know, use me up and, you know, fornicate with me, pay me, take trips with me and all will be forgiven. So yeah, I, I think I'm I'm fighting upstream. It's time to get into politics. Get into some of these beautiful women. Uh, uh, shut up, boy, shut up. It's clear, I do my job and I will continue to do it with distinction, with dignity and integrity every step of the way. And so that's what I have to say on that. But we saw them going in and out of apartments. We saw them traveling to San Francisco, okay? 
meetings wrapped up Friday at noon, but they didn't leave until they boarded a flight until 11.05 p.m. There's some allegations of them going to Dubai, spending taxpayers' money. And here's my favorite clip, the clip in which she said that, you know what, there was no way that she was going to refund the city's money, but she was using the city's money to... Wait a minute, you telling me? I get into politics, Mr. Kimi says it's a win-win. It's starting to sound like it. It's shaping up to sound like a win-win. Hey, man, listen here. These dudes are just on the politic boards. They got power. They got position. They clapping cheeks. They going to Dubai. They using our money. Oh, man. I'm going to get the pastoring and politicking in a minute, boy. They get to clap the cheeks and then go pray about it. And people just be like, okay, all oh, forgive me. I'm doing this shit all wrong. They catch me cl clapping some cheeks. Everybody going to be mad. If I was a pastor or a politician, I can just go pray and just say the devil, leave me alone. Or something like that. Shit, I need to get a mayoral seat or something. No, I want to get up under these black women right here. I want. I don't want to be the top dog because if you the top dog and you sleep down like, uh, like allegedly Fanny, well, not allegedly, like Fanny Willis did, your black ass going to jail. So, yeah, yeah, I don't want to end up like Diddy. Uh -uh, no, I ain't going to end up at no Diddy party. You got me fucked up. No, 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 you got me fucked up. I'm way up. I ain't the Diddy party nigga. <laughs> no. Uh, but no, what I'm saying is I want to get up under them one of these strong women and just act all innocent. Yes, boo. And just do all the clerical work. Yeah. <laughs> Seven foot tall and outspoken, you going to jail. <laughs> No, Mr. Kimi, I know how to be quiet. I'm, I ain't going to say a damn thing. I'm going to get up on one of these beautiful women. I'm just trying to get to Dubai. Shit, when they, they tell me to go get something, I'm going to get it fast. Yeah, I'm just trying to get to Dubai. It's not the devil, it's the flesh. <laughs> hey, that shit crazy. These politicians is horny. <laughs> these people, y'all must be working these politicians too hard. We need to give these politicians a day off so they can be normal. Because just think about it. Y'all got these people in meetings all day, and they only around each other. And it's my theory that you sleep with who you're around. So you got these people around these other men and women longer than they with their husbands and their wives. So what you think going to happen? So, yeah, um, I think all these politicians just busting each other down on the low. When they want to bust one of the women down, they set up a meeting with them. So it gives them a reason to be around each other. Just think about it. All y'all wives that's out there working in government and working in all these offices, these dudes that's out here, if they thinking like me, if they single or whatever, even if they have a woman, they just keep setting up meetings with your girl and they keep laughing with your girl. You know, before you know it, hey. I don't know. It seems like these politicians are horny. I don't know. By business class when she shouldn't. Let's play that clip. Sure. So first of all, that is a personal matter as it relates to the Batty family. And actually, it's none of my business and quite frankly, none of yours. As it relates to my involvement or the false allegations, you know, I've, I've responded to that. Um, I, I get them all the time and they just haven't stopped. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's really interesting. They just haven't stopped and I really don't expect them to. Um, as I've stated, you know, uh, based on the false uh, allegations that come my way, by the time I finish this job, literally, you know, accused of, of sleeping with half the city of New Orleans, both genders and all pronouns. I'm known as TD sometimes and then T other times. So with that, false allegations do not, um, that's, that's basically all I have to say about it. So now, let's go back to the city-owned Upper Pontalba apartment, which overlooks Jackson Square, okay? Uh, we see them going in and out of this apartment together spending hours of the workday inside. His former wife says that he was in there clapping cheeks. So now what they're doing is they're investigating her. And you know who they are? The FBI. Okay, so once again, he's married. He has a family at home. But because he's working, he's around this woman all the time. And he ends up clapping cheeks at work. Y'all starting to see a correlation between all these jobs and working all the time and being away from your spouse. Do you see how a lot of these people are just sleeping with each other? It's a lot of cheek clapping going on at work. I ain't had a job in a while. I might need to go get me a goddamn job. <laughs> 
I have to start at the entry level position too and shit. I ain't got but a high school diploma, so shit. All the women that sleep with me, it's gonna be they gonna be sleeping down. So yeah, they'll be in trouble. <laughs> and I'm not gonna tell them. Where is my dog on other lighting? My shit. Dog on light and untuck it out on. Where is my other light at, Jack? Coochie is power. Sure is. FBI didn't look, don't look hard at Hillary. Uh, 30,000 deleted emails. Oh, don't bring it up now. Shoot, I've been saying that. Y'all ain't want to say that when she was going through that. Y'all oh, said orange man, bad. Y'all didn't want to keep her honest. You know damn well they're going to keep us honest. Y'all ain't want to keep her honest, so don't try to keep her honest now. And you know what? When the FBI are interested in giving those potential charges, they're going to find everything. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Let's say, for an example, what's going on with Tiffany Hingard over there in Dalton. In Dalton, Illinois, for an example, Tiffany Hingard was refusing to give business licenses to people that refused them. So how did she respond? Well, I'm not going to renew your license. You don't want to endorse me. So now this has been alerted to the FBI. You're on the FBI's page of ideas. Now what they're going to say is let's look into it the same way with Fannie Willis, Nathan Wade. They're going to look into this. All of these kickbacks, okay, that they're using from the city's money. And then you're going around and you're like, it doesn't matter, or you don't care. That's your attitude. It doesn't matter. You don't care. You will do whatever you want gladly. And so now it's like, okay, so since you gladly want to do whatever you feel like doing, well, you know what? Here, here's here's what can happen then. Since you feel like you can do whatever you want to do, boom, take that. Let's check you out. Because largely what happens is that these ladies have not read history. They I don't know what the problem is. They don't understand that absolute power corrupts absolutely so maybe they feel like nothing will happen to them for whatever reason like you know what i'm gonna be okay this won't affect me this won't be my problem uh, this won't be my issue uh, this won't be my concern that concern is for someone else not me you know like i'm a black woman this is what you're gonna have to hear right and i'm not saying this is gonna be for everybody who's a black woman saying this but the, i've been hearing that when you've been looking at some of these things going on with some of these attorneys look at attorney mosby beautiful lady too out there in baltimore what was the first thing that they said about her in baltimore with her multiple charges, she will be disbarred too, by the way. What did they say? Marilyn Mosby. She says, or her followers are saying, well, she's a black woman. That's why. Or maybe it's not about being a black woman. Maybe it's about she happens to be a black woman and made a series of really bad mistakes while being, at the same time, a black woman. Right? O'Shea Duke Jackson. They got group think. They ain't going to listen to you saying that. They're going to be like, hell no, you hating on a black woman. I do think we got to get back to the context of our character, not the color of our skin and not that I'm a black woman, not this gender shit. We are tipping the scale. We're going overboard with that because the same thing that make you laugh going to end up making you cry. If you're going to keep having the board tally you as a black woman and all this other stuff and the people that they put in power, you see the way that they're doing it. You see they're just having sex and a lot of them are just having sex, spending money and taking trips. If you're going to let that represent you when it's time for them to judge the performance and then they say, well, look at what these black women have been doing. Don't get mad and don't start separating yourself. Then you better start separating yourself now. Not all black women will get into a situation and act like that. So you better start calling out the behavior as individuals so that they know, just like this one lady did, if I need to go back to it, I got that video. This one lady called it out and she called it straight down the middle, did not care. And she just said it how it is. Good, Let me got that on go get the video. That was on O'Shea as well. Let me go get that video so I can remind y'all. And this is a black woman saying this. And I'm sure she's not saying it with any malice. She's just saying it because you have these people representing you as a black woman. And if you have a bunch of, if you're being represented in the wrong way, then you're supposed to call that out. Unless you're in agreements and in line with this behavior, then you're not supposed to sit back quiet and just say she's black. So it's all good because they're going to, they're going to judge you based on that.
Then we have this lovely lady who has pointed this out, who lives in Atlanta. Her name is the Standard of Truth Podcast. I'm not sure if it's on YouTube, but it appears to be that. Check her out. So, Fly, don't be one ply toilet paper, okay? I'm playing a video from a clip from a young lady. If you got a problem with what she's about to say, O'Shea is about to reference her channel. So, so Fly, I just said, I believe women are individuals, but uh, y'all don't act that way. They put y'all in groups. They say as a black woman. So this woman is calling it out. And if you have a problem with that, again, so fly, they're about to reference, they're about to reference this woman's page. So if you just got here, so fly, don't just walk in the door making a lot of noise, stomping around, being loud. You walk in and you find out what's going on, then you comment, okay? Because I didn't say anything wrong, so fly. So they're treating women as a group, as a collective, so much so that women got to say, uh-uh, black women are not a monolith. But silence, when you stay silent on things like this, they group you up. Yeah, I know it's always one. She coming in here with that mouth. But if you have a problem with what this young lady said, go in her comment section and let her know or try to interview her. Standard of Truth podcast. I'm not sure if it's on YouTube, but it appears to be that. Check her out. She's talking. So, so fly. Any di disagreements, questions, concerns? Standard of Truth podcast. Talking about Fannie Willis and other people in Atlanta. Some of those I want to talk about today and in other cities. Well, Let's check out what she has to say. But this, this woe is me, cry me a river. Like Fulton County is run by nothing but black folk. Like literally. Everybody in, uh, in the government, local government, in county government is black. Same with the Cab County. So I'd be wondering, I'm like, where is, where is all this racism that y'all be crying about? Because y'all are the ones in charge. We got a black mayor. It might, it might be some white brothers sprinkled on Atlanta City Council. I don't know. I don't keep up with that. Atlanta is run by black folks. So... We done ran it into the ground, but y'all crying racism. You can't be serious. You can't be. I just moved from one of the corrupt, most corrupt counties in this state, DeKalb County. It's a mess. But now that we've heard that, let's look at some of the other ladies. Now, so fly, if you have any issues with what this black woman said, uh, Standard of Justice podcast, you can go drop all your receipts for all your questions concerned. Because one thing you're not going to be able to do is say, here you are attacking black women because you like to use that when it's a male. But this is a female. So now when it's a mano a mano, black woman to black woman, you really can't have conversations. I already know that. So we're going to go back to the other video. And for those people that can't, deal with the hard truths and um what's going on without being negative without being disrespectful and derogatory towards the host maybe this is not the channel for you because some of this information you would not get if you didn't get it on my channel and some of these other youtubers like anton daniels it's one thing to not get the information it's another thing to disrespect people for putting out the information meet with the president was the national border patrol council now they are the union that represents the border patrol agents on the line now i was able to speak to the vice president who's been an agent for 22 years and he tells me he has mixed emotions about the lack of an invitation with the president uh, it's kind of mixed emotions. It's good that the president's finally coming down. It, too bad it wasn't this time last year or three years ago when, when everything kind of went crazy. So fly, maybe you don't know the definition of being rude, but this is my house. This is my show. You bust right in my show, started making assumptions. You said, here you go again, talking about black women or with the black woman stuff. And then after you were questioned a little bit on what you said, 
you admitted that you wasn't even here long. You just got here. So you just walked in the room with a bunch of assumptions. So that's disrespectful, man. Respectfully. That's very disrespectful. You tried to make it seem like I was saying something that I wasn't. And then when you realize it was a black woman saying it, and you can actually go to her podcast and disagree with anything she's saying without coming over here doing that over here. Yeah, she broke the door down with all that noise. But she can't fathom herself being disrespectful. Crazy, but I guess uh, better late than never. It's been a busy year. Already in fiscal year 2024, Border Patrol has encountered over 1,230,000 people illegally entering the country. And that's just the ones that we're able to document. That doesn't include the ones that got over here and was just walking around aimlessly and then they wind up finding a city that they wanted to go to. But that's just the ones that we documented. Millions, millions of illegal immigrants into this country. But even with these large numbers, agents are now seeing a slight decrease in apprehensions. This area last year, we were seeing thousands a day just in this area. I think yesterday we saw 12. Um, so, you know, the state of Texas has done a pretty good job of, of shutting this area down. Um, you know, it, it would have been good uh, maybe if he's in here to talk to you know, representatives of the state of Texas to figure out what needs to be done along the rest of the border. But the dip in numbers, Cabrera says, is due to the work the state of Texas has done, like Senate Bill 4, you, not the work of the federal government. Take this fight to these organizations and assume operational control. I think it has a lot to do with uh, what the state of Texas, uh, most notably the borders are, uh, Mike Banks has done down here. Um, you know, Texas has slowing down from Eagle, from um, Brownsville all the way to El Paso. So apparently Trump and Biden was here at the border at the same damn time. Yeah, him and Trump was here at the same damn time at the border. Let's get to that Biden speech. Matter of fact, I think I have this speech. Um, I think I have it without Antoine in. I think I, somebody just sent it to me. Oh, no, I don't have it. Let me see. Detroit for the last three months, documenting the culture and the food scene, and he had a really, really great review of what he found to be a dope city that most people are not familiar with, but we're going to talk about that on After Hours. Before he even got to the city, I ran into him at the airport, flying into the city. A budget, so anyway. <laughs> Cities and towns. I know we talk a little slower than usual. Here today. No one, no one works harder for a safe, secure border than all of you. And Secretary Mayorkas has joined us today, and he's joined by seven mayors and cities and towns across South Texas. Four county judges here from across the state. I told a county judge that I used to be a county official. That's the hardest child in American politics. You know why? They think you can do everything, you don't have the budget. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he's so corny. Was that a pre-planned joke? God, man, just stick to the issues. And the two leaders from the Texas legislature, State House, Leader Trey's here, Trey Martinez Fisher, and the state Senate leader, Carol Alvadero. Uh, and uh, look, uh, and all the other local officials that are here today, I want to say thanks. Folks, it's real simple. It's time to act. It's long past time to act. I just received a briefing from the Border Patrol at the border, as well as immigration and enforcement, asylum officers, and they're all doing incredible work under really tough conditions. Really tough conditions. They told me what, they, what, what you already know and we already know. They desperately need more resources. Say it again, they desperately need more resources. They need more agents, more officers, more judges, more equipment in order to secure our border. Folks, it's time for us to move on this. We can't wait any longer. Folks, in my first day as president, I introduced a bill I sent to Congress, a comprehensive plan to fix the broken immigration system and to secure the border. But no action was taken. Then months ago, my team began a serious negotiation in a bipartisan group of senators, Democrat leading conservative Republicans and de progressive Democrats, and it resulted in a compromise bill. It's the toughest set of border security reform we've ever seen in this country. It's pretty basic. With this deal, we could hire 1,500 additional border security agents, 1,500 additional officers and officers, and between ports of entry, for the last four years, staffing has been roughly that, flat, just flat. Agents working overtime, spending long hours patrolling the border, making major sacrifices. And I know it takes a big toll on them and their families. That's why in December I signed the bill, finally getting Border Patrol agents, which I've been pushed by and reminded by the congressman, overtime pay they deserve. Finally getting overtime pay. I mean, it's ridiculous it took this long. It was a long past time, and I was proud to do it. But we need to do more. It's time to step up. It's time to step up, provide them with significantly more personnel and capability. We also need more immigration judges to help handle the backlog. 
2 million cases. Backlog of 2 million cases. And this bipartisan deal provide funding for 100 more immigration judges immediately. It will also establish new efficient and fair. Hmm. Give me a second. Let's see if I can find this real quick. Now, me. A little bit more of a speech. We want to make sure that we all. Encourages more people to come this straight. Because I want to I want to make sure that I played it correctly. Give me a second. As I haven't heard this speech, this is my first time hearing it. More people, this encourages more people to come to the country. <laughs> this encourages more people to come to the country. This encourages more people. This would encourage more people to come to the country. Okay, let me let me just replay. Play it one more time. I want to make sure we all on the same page. Determine whether you can say it. This will encourage more people. This encourages more people to come to the country. <laughs> Is that what the people want? Border Patrol. Yeah, I remember he said that. I think I saw a video of Dr. Claude Anderson. He said black folks will be uh, the minority uh, uh, impoverished uh, minority class by the year 2015. He said beyond repair. And now I, I thought, I'm like, man, what is, how the hell does he see that? I don't get what he's saying. Because at that time, it looked like black people was booming. We, You know, they tell us about Oprah. They tell us about MJ. They tell us about everybody. I was doing great, still doing good. So we think about it from an individual standpoint, and we don't see it from an overall standpoint. And, and now it's crystal clear to see it. Black males as a whole, we don't know how to work. We don't do the regular everyday jobs that's sustainable. We're either in, we're all, we're so heavy into entertainment. We're very heavy. The white folks know how to destroy us right now or control us. Okay, none of y'all are gonna get into entertainment. We're gonna limit the number of basketball players because now we got the Europeans coming over and we're about to take this game international. So we won't need America's to watch because we're gonna take flights over to Europe. And they're going to watch. And they're going to fill up soccer stadiums damn near <laughs> with watching basketball. And then they're going to make sure some of the football players don't make it. But the football, they got NLI deals. The basketball, they got NLI deals. So, you know, maybe that'll help them out. I don't know. But just being so heavy dependent on entertainment and not not that's not sustainable. They're going to bring these guys in. They're going to work every day. They're going to keep having children. They're going to grow up working every day. They're going to get all the contracting jobs. It's going to be so much of a disparity between uh, the, the rich blacks and the blacks that are just everyday workers. It's going to be such a disparaging, a disparaging number between the difference between the two. It's going to be crazy. Get it out, boy. Goddamn swagger dad's kicking in. Morning, KB. This is crazy. Why is why is it always black men fault? We get the blame for everything. Some of these ladies on YouTube encouraging black destruction by words. Salute, Russell Red. It's always your fault, Russell. You know that. You Mississippi pimp. And tell her how baby mama I said, what's up? <laughs> hey. This is crazy, man. Let's keep it going. Open borders. Encouraging more people to come to the country. Let me just play a little bit more. I, listen, I'm not the sharpest knife in the tool shed. I just want to make sure that we all see this because we had the professor up there trying to hold me accountable. And I'm hearing it directly from this man's mouth. Okay, let's continue. They get by the first, say they got another five, seven, eight years before they have to do anything because they know they cannot handle the caseloads quickly and they'll be able to stay in this country in the meantime. With new policies in this bill, in addition to 4,300 additional asylum officers, we'll be able to reduce that process to less than six months. That would have a serious deterrent effect on those coming north. When, 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 when a criminal gang say, we'll get you north, what's 8,000 bucks? They say, no, wait, let me get this straight. I'm going to go north. It's going to cost me six, eight, probably closer to eight, I guess, thousand dollars equivalent. And I'm going to get there and in six months, they may be able to get rid of me. I don't know, man. Six months, seven years, two different things. So he acknowledges that there's pay for play with the cartels. 
day, man. This guy is amazing. He's a yo. I just wanna, I just wanna make sure that we all on the same page because it's there's been a lot of people that's been holding me accountable. They said, Anton, Anton. We're voting for this guy because he has our best interests at heart. So first of all, he acknowledges that there's cartels making a lot of money and who knows where the money is going and we're not going to have that conversation, but neither here nor there. And he's understating the amount because there's been reports of up to $35,000 per person that they're paying to get here, not including the plane tickets and the flights that they're taking to get to the spaces that ultimately lead them down the path to be able to get to America in the first place. And now he's basically saying, listen, see students perspective. Why would we want the cartels to get money when we can expedite the process by making sure that we invest more in the judges and people that can process these asylum seekers into the country to more effectively have them here legally? So it's not that he's trying to prevent people from getting in. What he's basically saying is we want more people coming into the country, but we want to just make sure that we spend more money process processing them quickly so that they can get driver's licenses, health care coverage, social services, and all of the rights that you got here in the United States of America. And then we want to try to cut off the nose of the cartel from making as much money as they make in order to get the people here. Yeah. Antoine is at, Antoine's at a loss for words. Antoine is at a loss for words. This is crazy. This is crazy, my friend. Come on over, migrants. <laughs> we will welcome you. Um, you need to. We need you here to wake us up. Mm -mm -mm. Wait a minute. Uh, I mean, why don't they just come in legally? That's a good question. Uh oh, free my nigga Toby. Biden is not for our best interest. We just see y'all see this white man on the screen right here. <laughs> Cause he damn sure ain't black. He ain't black. Y'all see this white man on the screen? Free my nigga double speak. Free my nigga Toby. But listen, y'all, that's my time, man. I got to get up out of this thing. Black people were supposed to back Democrats up with illegal immigration. Oh, we were? KB letting migrants camp on this land. Man, y'all crazy. Y'all are crazy, but I do know this though. This man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. No disrespect whatsoever, but I'm sorry to call, tell everybody the truth. The man cannot play the game of basketball. He has small hands. He can't catch the ball. He's got bad feet. He can't really move, even though he's mobile. Doesn't really know what he's doing. Doesn't have a post move that he, he puts to memory that he can do two times in a row. He has no game whatsoever. Plays no defense. Doesn't have the heart, the passion, or anything that comes with it. Now, this man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. No disrespect whatsoever, but I'm sorry to call, tell everybody the truth. The man cannot play the game of basketball. He has small hands. He. <laughs> oh man, this is a this is priceless. This is amazing. Salute to all y'all, man. I'm up out of this thing. Salute to the thumbnail lady. Salute to my editor. Salute to It's Just Gems. Gems I View. And the rest of them is up there. I'm up out of this thing. I'm gone. <laughs>